The first step in creating an experiment with the DOE wizard is to define the variables that you'll be measuring whenever you run an experiment. I'm going to suppose that we manufacture widgets and that the primary characteristic of the widgets we're concerned about is their strength. In fact, there's a specification for strength. Each widget is supposed to have a strength as close to 250 PSI as possible, and all widgets are supposed to be within the range 250 plus and minus 50. The goal of our experiment will be to find the levels of the process factors, the things we can vary as we manufacture the widgets, that will keep the mean strength as close as possible to 250 PSI, while at the same time minimizing the variability of the process. To create an experiment using the Stack Graphics DOE wizard, we first go to the top menu and find the menu item DOE. We then select from that menu Experimental Design Wizard. This will open up a brand new window with a special toolbar, a toolbar with 12 steps that we will use to create, analyze, and use the results of our experiment. To define the responses, I'll begin by pressing Step 1, which will bring up another dialog box. We begin by giving a comment for our experiment, and I'm going to be not very creative. I'm just going to call this a widgets experiment. The second thing we do is to define the number of response variables that we'll wish to model after we've done the experiment. In this case, although it's only strength that I'm concerned about, there will be two characteristics of strength that I'm concerned with. So I'll actually use these arrows here to define two variables. Now, both of the variables are going to be called strength. In fact, if you want to model two different characteristics of a single variable, you use the same name for both. On the other hand, if there were other features of the widgets, maybe the diameter or something like that I also wanted to model, I would use a different name. The units of strength are PSI. And the two things I want to analyze, first off, I want to analyze the mean. And secondly, I'd also like to build the model for the standard deviation. Now, we have a number of different choices for the parameter that we want to analyze. We could also analyze the coefficient of variation, or one of four different signal-to-noise ratios that Professor Taguchi likes to talk about. In this case, though, it'll be the mean and the standard deviation I'll be concerned with. Now, the goal of the mean will be to try and hit a target. In fact, the target for strength, for mean strength, is 250. As far as the standard deviation is concerned, my goal here will be to minimize it to make it as small as possible. Now, there's an impact column on this dialog box in which I can pick a number between 1 and 5 to specify how important each of these characteristics is. It's actually the relative number here that matters. And since I think the mean and the standard deviation are probably about as important uh, as one another. I'll just leave both of those at three. Now the last three columns we'll use to define the range in which we'd like to keep these characteristics. Uh, as far as the mean is concerned, uh, I'm thinking that probably a mean somewhere between, let's say, 240 and 260 is all that would be acceptable. When it comes time to do an optimization, we will actually define something called the desirability of the response. And the most desirable value for the mean is going to be 250, and that'll have a desirability of 1. And as we move away from 250, the desirability will fall and actually reach 0 at 240 or below in 260 uh, and above. As far as the standard deviation is concerned, the spec is plus and minus 50, so I suspect that anything more than about 10 on the standard deviation would be unacceptable, whereas 0 would be great, although I doubt we'll ever make that.
once you've defined the two characteristics here, the two responses that you wish to measure, you can then press OK and the information will be added to the main DOE wizard window.